Can I say hi? All right, here we go. So in this problem, we have um, two masses connected to a spring, right? We're going to compress the, the masses, and we're going to let them go. So the first part says set up your equations, OK? So E initial equals E final. We'll set that up. So what's our starting energy in this problem? Potential, spring potential, OK? So we push it, we input spring potential energy, then we let it go. One cart moves one way, the other cart moves the other way. So what kind of energy does M1 and M2 have? Kinetic. kinetic. So we have two kinetics, kinetic one plus kinetic two. Okay, and if we put this in equation form, we should have one half kx squared equals one half m1 v1 <coughs> squared plus one half m2 v2 squared. Okay, so that's our setup for the energy equation. Then we have momentum as well. So before I let go of this, so let's write that out, P initial equals P final. Before I let this go, what kind of, uh, how much momentum do we have? Zero. zero. So our starting momentum is zero. That should equal, well, the two momentums. So we have one has a momentum, M1, V1. The other one has a momentum, M2, V2. Okay, so that's the setup. We are solving for velocities. They gave you the masses <coughs> and the k and the x. So we have two equations, two unknowns. What do we do when we have two equations, two unknowns? We solve for one variable and then substitute in and solve from there. At this point, you could plug in some numbers. For some of you, it's probably easier to do it that way, plug in some numbers and then go ahead and solve it. The algebra is a little bit easier. I'm going to do it with just variables, just so you can see it done that way. So my recommendation is set it up with the uh, masses. OK, go ahead and do the masses, uh, sorry, with the momentum. Solve it for that one first. OK, so rearrange your equation. You guys just did this yesterday. So V1 uh, equals, what does that equal? Negative m2 v2 divided by m1 okay so again you could plug in the numbers if you wished we're going to go ahead and throw this all the way into here substitute that in there right so we have our one half kx squared plus one oops not plus equals one half m1 and then the substitution okay our substitution is uh, negative m2 v2 <coughs> divided by m1 and then don't forget that square right there plus one half m2 v2 squared Okay, you guys watch my algebra. If I make like a little mistake, just let me know, okay? All right, don't forget this is squared. So we've got to square that out. Now that negative gets squared as well. So that just becomes a nice positive here. Uh, actually, I have halves everywhere. So let's just cancel out all those halves. So we've got a kx squared equals, so m1, I guess I'll just do this, m2 squared, v2 squared, over m1 squared, 1m1 one cancels, plus m2 v2 squared. <coughs> Isolate our v2, v2 squared, m2 squared, v2 squared, no, 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 that's gone, m1 plus m2. Again, if these are just numbers, remember. So if you put numbers at any point, you probably will save yourself a little bit of heartache. Kx squared divided by m2 squared over m1 plus m2, the quantity of that. V2 squared. 
and then we just square root that, right? Go ahead and square root that whole thing. So if this was a variable only question, you would probably stop at this point. That would be your answer. You could, I suppose, simplify. I think you'd be fine just leaving it like this. OK? Uh, I'm not going to do all the numbers. You guys can plug in the numbers yourselves. The answers are right here, right? So you should get 1v is going to be negative 1.7, and the other v is going to be 1.1. Those of you that are ahead of me, what are you getting for, which one is the V1 and which one is the V2? Well, negative. <coughs> this is V1, yeah. this is V2. Oh yeah, because it's going backwards, that makes sense. 